yeah, teachers in the stretch class, and we do use um, some of these there. Is that is that the question you're trying yeah, to ask? Yeah, the stretch okay. flag, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, a lot of these are used in a lot in a few of the classes, yes. So, any, any other questions? If not, you get, if you think of any, just ask them at the end. Yeah, we'll ask more questions at the end. Yeah. Um, so anything off related or all right well thank you all <laughs>
and help us activate those muscles. So in the stance here, we're going to have feet shoulder width apart. <clears throat> we're going to, let me stand this way so you can see a little better. We're having knees bent slightly. And if you'll notice here, the first thing that I would evaluate if you come to me because it's so important in golf is pelvic tilt. All right, so if my hips are inward, my hips aren't activated and aren't ready to go. So it's so important that our rear is out and that we've activated our hips ready to go. You're going to put as much arch in your lower back as you can. Keep your shoulders back, all right? So they're flat. A lot of people have rounded shoulders. It's my worst, my worst thing, maybe, is my lower back and my rounded shoulders because I sit uh, all through school my whole life, just like every one of you have, and maybe at work if you worked at a computer. If you sit at a computer desk, and you're hunched over like this, it's so hard to have good posture. You're stretching out your back muscles and contracting your chest muscles. So all the time for me, it's more important to do these kind of things that, chest, that stretch out my chest muscles like he was talking about because I tend to have really bad rounded shoulders. The other thing that uh, is so important in that stance is, is like I was talking about is, is with the hip flexors. And we got, we got to make sure we do a lot of those workouts he talked about to get to get your hips to where you can you can stick them back so that way as you're going to swing they're already activated it's a whole lot easier to turn because if i'm stuck in this position here and i want to turn it's a whole lot harder than if my hips are activated and we'll, we'll use kyle here to help us uh, with this well, in the stance, what you have to do to get better in that stance is, is, is length, lengthen your hip flexors, uh, work out your lower back with those leg swings to get them stretched out because if it's not stretched out, it's hard to get in that position. And then also, it really pulls on your quads. All right, so you can do the traditional quad stretch. If you can, if you can do it, just grab your back, back foot, bring it up to you. And you don't want to sit there before you're practicing. You don't want to hold it for a long time. But if you're in the workout gym, which is a lot of the stuff that I'm kind of focusing on, you want to uh, do more static stretching to stretch out your muscles. That way, when you go to perform, you have more mobility. All right, does that make sense? So next part we're going to go into. We're going to we've talked about the stance, and we're going to go into the backswing. All right, so. Once we've got our stance, our hips are activated, feet shoulder width apart. All right, we've stretched out, we've worked out those uh, problems so we can get in this position now. Or the next position is the back swing. All right, so this is an exercise here you can do just to warm up or just a little stretch, just to warm up to get ready, which was also in his book, to get ready to go. But I want to tell you why, uh, why this is so important, all right? So if I'm here, in the golf swing, in the stance, and I'm going to take to make a shoulder turn. All right, I need to make a full shoulder turn where if the ball was here in the middle of my stance, where if I put the club across my chest, that I can turn where the club is pointed at, at the golf ball. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, that's a full full turn. You hear people say, "Well, you need to make a full turn." If you can only turn here and you can't get the club pointed at where the golf ball would be on the ground then you've not allowed yourself to get far enough behind the golf ball. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Adam, yes. What would you what would you do, what would a student do to compensate for having not having a full shoulder turn? Yep. So so at that point they break down their arm, mm -hmm. get into a bad position. Sure. They're show show that and show where yep. the stretch is with help. Yep, I'm going right into that. I'm actually, I'm gonna go ahead and talk. No, you're good. No, you're good. You're good. My next, my next part was to talk about the, the arms and the shoulders. Right. So if we've got to the point where uh, we can get in a good stance, our hips are out, our knees are slightly bent, and we're activated, and we can make a full turn, we're halfway there in the golf swing. What we need to be, and hopefully you you can already pick out maybe something that you wasn't able to do that now you know what you need to work on. Maybe you couldn't get in this position with your hips out. All right. So it's. For each individual, it's going to be different. All right, the next thing is when we get back to the top, we want our golf club in this position. All right, and this is where I'll get into a, a little bit of, of golf training. All right, so if we turn, if we turn, make a full shoulder turn, you've seen on TV a hundred times the golf club pointed in this position, right? Right at the top of the swing, it's pointed at this angle. All right, so 
I maybe the most important thing I could say for the for the golf swing, how how to make you better, if you didn't listen to anything else I was gonna say is, is this next part because I see so many guys that are really strong up top that can't get in this position. Alright, and by this position I'm talking about shoulders completely turned. And if you'll notice my right hand is straight above my elbow. So if I was a waiter and I had the plate on my hand. So imagine there's a big tray there, right? Big tray, and I wouldn't dump the food in, in the ground. So this position right here is so important because it allows that club to get laid down in the backswing. If my elbow gets thrown out, the club gets stood up. All right, now what happens when the club gets stood up? We come, the club is already outside of the golf ball because it's stood up. It's coming down at a steeper angle and we have a whole lot of harder time of shallowing out and hitting the ball because the club's already so far way out in front of us and stood up, all right? It's probably the most common thing in golf because if I'm outside of the golf ball, I have to swing down and to the left and to the back and I'm putting cut spin on it. So that's why everybody, or most people, hit a slice, right? That's the most common shot in golf. All right, so what we gotta work on is being able to put our right elbow underneath our hand. All right, we gotta be able to know that our wrist can get in this position. All right, can everybody do that? Is it hard? Do you feel it stretching your shoulder? Now, now, now imagine having to be able to do that while you're slightly bent over and forward. Right. John Rahm, the new golfer that's so good, he's the world's best. He gets that club shaft laid down that elbow just like this and tucks it. I don't even know how he, how he gets in that position. And not everybody is going to be able to get in that position. But the more you can get like this, the more you can stretch that shoulder out and get in that position, the more your golf club will lay down and it will stay behind you and work from the inside out, which everybody tells you swing inside out, right? All right, the next thing we can work about, he talked about, he said do this after, which is static, which I, that's kind of what I'm talking about. We're going to do these things while we're we're at the workout gym, not before we go play golf. Those wrist stretches here, all right. So if I can't if I can't get this hand back parallel, I can't get in that position. And same thing with the left hand. I want to be able to let it match right there. Because a lot of times people can do it one-handed, and then when they go to stick their other hand on there, the, it goes like this. And again, your elbow's out. All right, so what's a couple uh, stretches we can do uh, for this? And again, I'm tight to the chest, so I do this all the time. Uh, we can walk into the corner of the wall. Imagine using the corner of your room. Imagine this is a perfect corner. We can put our hands up and walk slightly forward where it's stretching us out just enough to where we don't, you know, you don't hurt yourself. You'll be able to tell everybody's different. So you can slightly walk, walk forward. And the same thing in here, when you're going through a doorway, at the house, you can grab the door, slowly walk forward, and it will stretch those muscles out. And these you want to hold longer periods of time because we're trying to lengthen the muscle. That way when we go to use it the next time, it's, it's stretched out more. Correct, Kyle? You want to lengthen that muscle so you can use it next time. Don't do it before you're going to play golf because that's so much work on there, you kind of actually lose a little bit of power. All right, the next thing we can do is the forearm and wrist stretches. And they're also, if you want to build up shoulder strength, you know, which will allow you to give you some more mobility, uh, one workout I'll do, and do not do this with heavy weight. If you go do this, do it. Even if it's just a tennis ball or a ball or a really light dumbbell, two or three pounds, maybe five or something for the guys that feel like they can do it. Is this shoulder cup rotation. You're gonna hold uh, your five pound weight, two pound weight, and do this maybe six to eight or ten times. Not only will that give you flexibility in the shoulder, but it also gives you a lot of strength. I know a lot of guys that used to play football and baseball in college, they did this if they were pitchers because it builds up strength. And when I say these things, I always want you to do them on the other side as well, right? Because maybe you only get your right hand in this position in golf, but I don't want you to leave your left arm out, okay? I always want to try to keep it up keep up with every body part where it's the same on both sides all right the next thing so we're 
we took our stance, we figured out how we need to work out and stretch to get in a good stance. We figured out what we need to do to get a full shoulder turn, right? We're going to just do some of those twists. We figured out how to get our arms and hands in a good position. And now we're going to go to the downswing, which the downswing here is what helps you create speed. Everybody wants to hit it a little further. We're going to show you the proper sequencing here and what you need to do to hit it a little further. So it's just like uh, a pitcher. A lot of people, a lot of people take the club and they swing with their arms, all right? Their, their, their shoulders are still closed off, their hips are not moving. They bring the club down in front of them with their arms. And what happens when you pull the club down in front of you? Did you watch it? Watch it right there. See how it stands up? Even if I'm in a good position here and I pull it down in front of me and don't move my lower body, it stands up. So just like they teach a pitcher to do, how you see a pitcher create momentum, he'll get in his stance, he'll take his arm back, and the first thing he does, it's almost like he's pushing into the ground, his hips open up, and you'll see, you ever seen their arm lay back? They're going to throw a curveball especially. They open their hips up, pivot forward, and the last thing to come through is their arm. So it's kind of the same thing in the golf swing. When you get to the top, I want you to be able to open your lower hips, open your shoulders up, slightly start to pivot forward, and if you can keep your arm in that position, that shaft will always stay behind you. It'll come closer to the ground and it'll work out, out to the right, which is a whole lot easier to hit golf shots. Um, you're not going to be as steep, so you're not going to hit it as fat. You're not going to hit it as thin. So you can see how being more flexible than probably all of us are would help us hit the golf ball a little bit better. All right. So if you're not flexible enough to do that, the shaft will stand up and it'll get outside of you. So you want to hear your, clear your hips first and be rotated at impact so the clubs and the arms can come through the hitting zone. You want to use the ground as leverage, all right? So when you're opening your hips, you're almost going to sink into the ground and then when you get through, you're going to push up and forward. So let's talk about some workouts uh, and stretches that you can do to help you do that. Uh, if you're in the gym, or if you're in the CMC, or if you go to your own gym, or if you have stuff at your house, uh, there's cable crossovers you can grab. You can put a certain amount of weight on them. Or you can grab a medicine ball that's 5, 10 pounds. And you can take the cable from the bottom. If you're in a workout gym, they usually sometimes the cable crossovers will come from the top. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Where you pull the, the rope. That's the right terminology, right? Cable crossover. Or you can use just a medicine ball from, grab it from the ground, push up and forward this way. All right, it's the same thing in like you're doing in the golf swing. You're going to use the, lever, use the ground as leverage to push up and forward. And that's going to help you create a lot of speed and help you in that downswing to come through the ball at impact. All right, does that make sense? Other workouts you can do to help make you stronger in that is just do regular old squats if you're able to. All right. Because that's going to build, that's the best workout for your lower body that there is. If you're able to do them, but don't do them on your own if you've never done them because form and squats is so important. You have to be in a good position or it's kind of easy to hurt yourself. I won't get into the form, I'll let God do that. Because <laughs> I'll probably tell you wrong. Uh, also lunges, I hate them and, and they're hard. Uh, and you don't, you don't have to do them with any weight. A lunge is where you can step forward bring the back knee to the ground and then right here is where it's hard right as you're pushing up all right you can do that with both legs that works out a whole lot of your lower body and stretches also your hamstrings and your quads when you swap sides all right next thing next thing is we've got our stance we've got our back swing uh, we've got our forward swing and we know everything we need to work out and stretch to do so the next thing is um, the finish all right, so when we finish, we've come through, we've got the shaft laid down, we're about to pivot forward, we're gonna push forward. And as we finish, we want it, want to be completely rotated where our hips are completely turned towards the target. So if I'm aiming down this way, I've rotated all the way enough where my chest and uh, my hips are pointed at the target. All right, now, this is where there's probably some controversy, and if any of you have lower back problems. The guys now, you've probably seen this on TV, the guys nowadays to launch it up in the air and they're, they're swinging so fast and creating so much speed is 
that they violently rotate their hips forward and they throw their hips out and they arch their lower back. Well, that's helping them to throw that ball up in the air and go really high. But that, that motion right there where you're lowering, you're putting a lot of pressure on your lower back. All right, it can really, really cause you pain. It's unfortunate that that's the good, a good way to hit the ball further, uh, but it's just, just not healthy. So what we want to work on is we to still be able to hit the ball far and swing hard is that when we rotate the pivot forward, that we're, we're more upright, our head's more over our hips, and we're not leaning back. We can transfer all of our weight forward, uh, but we're not leaning back because it's really going to put a lot of pressure on that lower back and can cause a, a lot of problems. All right, and some workouts to do that is we can hold that ball at our right pocket, that medicine ball we were talking about that's two or three pounds. From here, push forward and hold it up the top. Same thing with some golf swings. We can just, uh, I bet it would be a lot harder than you think if you walked out on the driving range, hit some shots, and held your finish until the ball landed. All right, I don't, I don't know if I see anybody doing it on the driving range. We're always hitting it and then we're going wherever. So we want to have been able to create, a, create enough balance uh, that we can hold our finish. And each one of those workouts where you're pulling the cable from the bottom or you're taking the ball here up top and holding the finish, every one of them is working your core and abs, which is where a lot of speed comes from and definitely a lot of your balance comes from. All right, uh, the last thing and then we'll go into some questions because I know it's probably uh, what everybody has, uh, what everybody would like to talk about specific areas, and, and which is really good. But I want to teach you one more uh, little workout uh, that, that kind of incorporates everything. It incorporates stretching, uh, a little bit of endurance, a little bit of uh, muscle mass, and it also just gets you in a lot better position in your golf swing. And I'm going to get the floor for this one. All right, so we have took our stance. We're going to do this one arm. If you're right-handed, you're going to use your right hand. All right, we took our stance. We're going to make our full shoulder turn, and we're going to take the club back one-handed. It's really easy to get, get in this position one-handed. Like I said before, when you have to take that other hand up there, if you haven't done enough stretching and got your wrist and forearms flexible enough, it's hard to get in that position with two hands. So we're going to work on it with one hand here, and it's also going to help you shallow out your golf swing and give you uh, give you a little bit better chance to hit a good shot. All right, so we're in a stance. We're going to turn back. We're going to put the right hand up with our elbows underneath. And from there, we're going to act like we're just throwing the golf club out into the driving range. All right, we're going to rotate forward and finish and hold. All right? It's great to do when you're on the driving range practice because it's going to help uh, loosen you up and then it's also going to help your golf swing. All right? All right, do a couple on this side. And don't forget, do it left-handed. It's very hard to do, and don't throw the golf club. But <laughs> we, want, we don't actually throw it. We want to make sure that we always try to equal out our body and work out both sides. All right, so we're in our stance. We've activated our hip flexors. We're in a good proper position. We're going to make a full shoulder turn for our shoulders underneath our chin, elbows underneath our arms, shafts laid down. We're going to pivot forward and throw it out in the driving room and then try to hold it. I promise you'll, you'll feel things be stretched when you hold it uh, that, you, that you haven't felt before. And if you get here and you're swing and something's tight, you're gonna immediately go right back down, right? It's gonna pull you off of your finish. It's gonna pull you off of your weight on your left side. So feel like you can do that where you get to the point where you can hold that and you can at least wait until the golf ball falls to the ground. Does that make sense? All right, we'll go ahead and open it up for some questions. Um, hopefully me or Kyle can answer uh, any situations you got, or maybe something we didn't cover, or maybe just a specific area that you thought, hey, you know, that's, that's my problem. What else can I do uh, to maybe be a little more flexible in that area or get a little better? Oh, come on, we got to have it one or two. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Is there something else that you can advise? If, if there's something else, are you saying you have trouble making a full shoulder turn? Yeah. All right, yeah, it's definitely something I could advise. Two things in the golf swing, and then I'll let him maybe talk about some stretches or work, workouts. All right. One thing is 
this is cheating a little bit and it can hinder the downswing. That's why I, I don't like to say it to the whole class, so if you don't have the issue, throw it out of your mind, right? There's so many different things we can say. But, but number one is open your right foot, all right? It frees up your hips, your knees, and your joints. That way you don't have to turn as much in the top, all right? Now stretching is obviously going to make you going to be able to, to maybe get there without that if you can, but you're the point where you're like, I can't turn back no matter what. Open that right toe just a little bit. It will relieve a lot of pressure to allow you turn. The second thing is, I don't know where this started, but a lot of people used to say, keep your knee, your right knee in. That's, if you watch old videos of Jack, Arnie and Tiger and all those guys, not Tiger, but some of the older ones, they never kept their right, right knee in. They allowed their, their back foot, their back leg to almost completely straighten out. Their hip would go up and it freed them to turn back. A lot of them guys would, would overturn. All right, and that's how they created speed. So don't let, don't, you don't have to lock your right knee in. Let it go back and up with you and it'll, get, it'll take all that pressure off your back because your hips are going with it. Will the left heel come off the ground? <laughs> Hopefully not. If, 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 you got that, if you got that problem, you just want it to roll in. You want it to just roll in just like that. You'll see that a lot of times. And back to the talking about with those guys pushing up and forward. You'll see Bubba Watson, he pushes up and forward so much that he almost comes completely off of his toes. He hits it further and creates more speed than anybody. So it's got to be a good thing. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people, I, I advise them, it's okay if they can't turn. You can you can come off of it that way with your back foot. You know, it, whatever you do to to be able to play, you know, and that's not going to hurt you. It's the same thing with uh, if you can't get to your left side, and you can't turn this way because. Uh, you've had a knee replacement or Bill Neeson that works for me had something going on with his ankle and he had to have surgery so I had him completely open up his front toe to relieve the pressure off of his knees and ankles that way he's already in the turn position and he come back and said hey I can turn and hit the ball without any pain so I'm gonna keep doing that. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 7 a.m. to 8. Um, I teach uh, primarily on Mondays and Wednesdays. So, yeah. yeah. I, would, I would say that it say you have a tea time at 8 or 9 o'clock, and uh, I would say to not come to that stretch class if you have a tea time at 8 to 9, just because we do primarily static stretching. Uh, and so. 4.30, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. 430 to 430 is 430 to 515. So it's just a 45 minute class. And that's on the hour. Okay. It's an hour. Okay. Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday. We've got some Monday. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday is 430 to 9. Are they both? Are they both uh, availability? Yeah. Yeah, there's no both available. Availability? Yeah. Yeah, they're never, um, I've never, whenever I've taught mine, it's never been full. There's always a group of people retired, they get to sleep in, as opposed to me, I can't. To be a member, uh, you don't have to be a member, you do have to pay a day pass. Um, and Sally's got a lot more of the information on the water's complex. Um, like paying. Well, what is it, what's the advantage of Tai Chi versus yoga? I'm the advantage of Tai Chi versus yoga. I have no clue. I would say, <laughs> I would say what, stretchy pants and yoga. I know that. Yeah. Uh, I, I would. I would say there'd be a more beneficial. I'd say there'd be. I said yoga probably more advanced than Tai Chi. Um, but that's the best I could. I didn't have a class over those. I know. I know it's, well, we're gonna let it up. we're gonna let Jeff close the class because it's three. But me and Kyle will be right here to answer any questions. Yeah, I, uh, listen. Is if there's any beginners golfers in the, in the class today? We have a, a get golf ready class that Adam teaches one.
one, Cody teaches one, and Grant's going to teach one. Um, I've got that information on the back desk. Sally has some free passes for the Wellness Center and a lot of information on the Wellness Center. And I've got some uh, uh, applications for the Men's League and 18 Old Ladies League and stuff. If anybody needs any information or if you need anything from me, I'll be back there. Just give me your email and I'll be glad to call you. Uh, let's give a hand for these guys. Fantastic.